Yo, yo, this is Matthew Aaron, the former host and founder of Crypto 101 Podcast and now producer of What is Crypto with Mr. Michael Dine. In this episode, Michael sits down to talk to Mr. John McAfee about what is your responsibility. And because of this conversation, I am forced, inspired, and encouraged to come on this show and tell you about this important news. Right now on Death Row, there's a man named Mr. Rodney Reed. And Mr. Rodney Reed is set to be executed on November 20th, just 13 days from the release of this episode. For somebody, it is quite possible that he did not kill. There's mountains of evidence that never been tested, witnesses that never been talked to. Yet, the governor of Texas is still willing to allow the state to kill this man. This is not the justice system I want to live in. This is not the America that we should allow to happen, where the state, where the government is allowed to kill somebody without seeing all of the evidence. There is DNA evidence. There is witness statements that put him at different places, yet they will not stay the execution and hear and submit and look at this evidence. It is very important for everybody to go on to freerodneyreed.com, fill out the petition, learn about this case, and at the very least, force the hand of the governor to stay the execution and look at the evidence. Look, I'm not in the courtrooms. I'm not the jury. I am not anybody. However, if there is reasonable doubt in any case, in anywhere of the United States, it is our responsibility to speak up and allow people to get a fair trial. And then it's the jury to make the decision, but they can't make that decision without all of the evidence. So please go to freerodneyreed.com, fill out the petition, and let's force the governor of Texas to save a man's life and hear all of the evidence. Now, let's listen to Mr. John McAfee to tell us about our responsibility. And I hope that everyone listening does something this week to make the world that they want to live in. Thank you. Welcome to the What is Crypto podcast. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the show where we talk about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and the future of blockchain technology. Today's guest is very special. We have Mr. John David McAfee himself. John is the founder of the software company McAfee Associates, and he's very, very, very well known for that. Also, John is a huge proponent of blockchain technology, especially Bitcoin and multiple other altcoins that he deems as the future of how we are going to not only run the financial industries, but also many other industries. And I'm really, really excited to have him on. Today, John and I talk about responsibility. What is a citizen's responsibility to changing the system? How can an average person make an impact on the way things are being run and the way the system functions? We also talk a little bit about how Bitcoin and blockchain fight back against the quote unquote man and why we should care about Bitcoin. Finally, we dive into a little bit of John's presidential campaign and his Bitcoin predictions. I just want to make the disclaimer that we are not giving any financial advice. This is strictly for entertainment and educational purposes. Finally, guys, if you want to dive deeper into the conversation, come join us on Twitter or on Facebook to have deeper discussions about each episode. And if you want to get this full episode and every full episode completely unedited, you can do so on our Patreon page. You can learn all about those links at whatiscrypto.com. All right, let's dive in and see what John has to say. I mean, that leads perfectly into the meat of the conversation that I really want to have with you. And it revolves around like a citizen's and an individual's responsibility. And what do you think that responsibility is? And and to what degree should they take responsibility for the things around them? First of all, responsibility to what or to whom? You have a responsibility to your children to make sure that they're fed and taken care of and at least halfway properly educated and out the door at 18 or God forbid 21 and they're on their own. That's a responsibility. 
You have a responsibility to your spouse if you have agreed to and committed to certain things like I will take care of you. You clean the house and I'll bring home the bacon. There's that responsibility. There's an overriding responsibility, which no one ever thinks about. And it is the most important responsibility. And that is your responsibility to yourself. Do you understand that if you do not first take on that mantle and bear it and wear it well, then you can't do anything for anybody else or on behalf of anyone else. And in your opinion, what is your responsibility to yourself? Your responsibility to yourself is to accept the reality of your situation, whatever it may be. I'm in a lovely, happily married arrangement, or I'm not in a loving and happily married relationship. I'm in a married relationship, which is unhappy and miserable. Now, I ask you how many people listen to me now are in relationships where if you sit down and are honest with yourself, you just don't want to be in. And yet you still are in it. So what is your responsibility to yourself in that situation? Slip out the back, Jack. Make a new plan, Stan. If I may paraphrase whoever wrote that song, that's one. And there are thousands. And if you're not true to yourself, by accepting. And why do people not accept that? That they're miserable? Because it's fearful to think of leaving what you know. Now Shakespeare said it best in Hamlet's soliloquy, what dreams may come after death must give us pause. Therefore, we bear those ills that we have rather than flee to those we know not of. Meaning, I'd rather be in a miserable marriage and God knows what's going to happen to me if I slip out the back jack and I've got $10 in my pocket and no wife and no home. <laughs> You'll be just fine. I promise. And that kind of leads into the responsibility to kind of society and to, I don't know, the overall consciousness of, of what we're building on, on our planet together as a group. How can we change the system? I know this is kind of a very big question here, but there's multiple avenues to do it. You do it in a specific way where you are very strong in your belief system and your stance on, on the things you do. But I really want to get your opinion specifically on the average person, you know, someone who goes to a job every single day or maybe just has a family and has kids at home but wants to make an impact on the way things are happening. How can they make an impact on the system? Okay, you've asked me two questions. That is, number one, what is our responsibility to society? And then it sort of folded into what can we do? Let's start with the first. Okay. What is your responsibility to society? I say none. Your responsibility is to understand the impact of your actions on those around you and to modify your actions so that they do not interfere with another person's right to act as they please. And if everybody follows that, there's no more responsibility to society. We don't fuck with each other. We don't steal from each other. We don't lie to each other. We keep our commitments and our contracts. And more importantly, we tell the truth. If we had that, which is the natural state of man, I contend, then what responsibility do you have to society? None. It's a gift. You have a responsibility to yourself to behave in ways in which you want your neighbor to behave in. Like you don't want your neighbor interfering in your life, well, then you can't interfere in his or hers. So you're saying pretty much that if everybody held the responsibility to themselves, society and the world around us would potentially function in a more harmonious way because we're all kind of in tune with the way that we're behaving and, and understanding boundaries and certain things like that? Yes. And so the second answer to your question is what do we do about the fucked up mess we're in? I just gave you the answer in the first part. Be true to yourself. If we were all true to ourselves. 
and had even the remotest semblance of humanity and compassion, which everybody does. I mean, consider which of you listening, whether you can swim or not, if you're walking by a river and a child is drowning and screaming for help, I know that whoever you are, you're gonna do one of two things. If you can swim, you're gonna jump in. I don't care if you're wearing uh, a you know, black tie going to the opera, you're gonna jump in. And if you can't swim, you're gonna yell for help Look for a brand so that the kid can grab onto something. We are all that person. And, and if that's in us, and if we behave in manners that we would want our neighbors to behave in, <laughs> there's nothing left to fix. People. I want to give a big shout out to our first sponsor. And our first sponsor is Celsius Network. They are doing some really, really cool stuff, trying to revolutionize the way we think about the financial world and financial services. Celsius offers 10% annual interest on all crypto deposits. And there's no secret to how they're doing it. That 10% comes from them sharing 80% of their profits rather than the 0.000001% that banks choose to share. Celsius is giving each user $10 in Bitcoin when they make their first 200 deposits or more in crypto or stable coins when they use the promo code NYE. These guys are working hard to revolutionize the way we look at the financial world and they're taking on the banks. I'm personally a huge fan of what Celsius is building, so dive over to celsius.network to learn more and to use your promo code NYE in order to get $10 in BTC when you make your first deposit of $200 or more. Shout out to our sponsor, B21. B21 is a mobile app and a crypto on-ramp to invest in cryptocurrency assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum. It is your personal wealth manager for all your crypto assets. The goal with B21 is that it allows you to invest in a few clicks. No more complex passwords, keys, wallets, or tech talk. Just set your goal, choose your crypto asset, and you are ready to go. B21 is easier than any trading platforms on the market today. You don't need any trading experience to get started or to get involved with cryptocurrency. You simply choose from the available coins and tokens, you set your investment goals, and you easily monitor all the progress. You can even set up reoccurring investments to draw from your bank or your debit card every single month. Head over to b21.io to join the waitlist. b21.io I love that. And how does Bitcoin play a role in this kind of ideology of being more self-responsible and, and things like that? Now, are you a Bitcoin maximalist, by the way, my friend? I'm just curious. Not a maximalist in the regards of I only believe Bitcoin will ever succeed. I think Bitcoin is the one that's proven its worth over the 10 years plus years that it's been alive. And I'm not necessarily against altcoins, but I think they're in an experimental phase. And that's I'm I'm an I'm a I'm a believer in innovation, right? I think Ethereum and all of these other things are innovations and they're experimental in innovations. And that if we close our minds to them because they could have potential. Someone could come through and create something valuable in the next five to 10 years through this. Well, so what you were saying is that Bitcoin is not an experiment, but all the art coins are. Well, I mean, okay, I'll let you start with that if that's what your position is going to be. Although, sir, if you think about it, please see the absurdity in that. Second point, I use every coin. Okay, I'm, I'm settling on DAI because I'm sick of fluctuations and it's never more than 1% off from the dollar, but I still use everything else. And Bitcoin is great, but my friend, it's the oldest of the technologies. For example, if I wanted to do something on Bitcoin's blockchain smart contracts, I go to Ethereum. If I want some privacy in my transactions, 
What am I going to do? I'm going to go to Monero. I mean, please consort to say that that these are experimental, uh, even though they're not much newer than Bitcoin, and to deny the massive functionality, improvements, and advances over Bitcoin. And that's all I'll say about it. Now, I, I prefer to use crypto, all right, because trust me, it won't be Bitcoin, and it won't be Monero, and it won't be Ethereum. It's going to be something else coming down the road five years from now. But even what we have out there, I'm sorry, they're here to stay. But what, how, how does this fold into our own individual sovereignty? You need to understand that fiat currencies, currencies controlled by governments, banks, the Fed, institutions, people or places of power, those currencies control your whole life. I mean, if you're living in the U.S., you can't, without U.S. dollars, pay the rent, send your kids to school, buy clothes, get medical assistance, get a car. You can't even get bus fare. You are dependent on the U.S. dollar for your very survival. And who controls that U.S. dollar? Not you. And it's not some consensus. No, it's some powerful people at the very top. They can increase the supply, devaluing your dollar or the reverse. They monitor every fucking thing that you do through the banks that hold your dollars. And laws are getting so stringent now. You got more than $10,000 cash on you anywhere. Well, fuck me, your suspect is a goddamn criminal. So you are controlled by that currency. And until you free yourself, from that, you'll never be free. And for the first time, the blockchain and cryptocurrencies have given us an opportunity to free ourselves. But we can only do it if we don't buy into the government's propaganda. And if we have courage enough to, when the government says it's illegal, you can't do it, well, keep in mind that. For 75 years, weed has been illegal in America. I never saw that law stop anyone or prevent them from lighting up. And certain things cannot be enforced, and this is one of them. It's Pandora's box. It's out here in the world. It's not going to get shoved back in, no matter what governments do. So what do you think about countries like India that are trying to ban them? Are you pretty much, I'm guessing you're under the opinion that it's only a matter of time until that goes away and they stop trying to enforce ridiculous laws on this? I don't know. I mean, it, it may go on for a year. It may go on for 75. It isn't what matters, what I'm saying. India, pass all the laws you want. Here's the problem. For governments, distributed exchanges are here and privacy coins have been here. For quite a while. If you do all of your transactions in Monero or Apollo or Zcash or something that has privacy and you're on a distributed exchange where no one's asking you your name and your bank accounts and uh, your email, nothing, then you tell me how governments are going to police this. It can't be done. So people listen up. All the laws and regulations on this planet will not and cannot stop the growth of cryptocurrency. And is that kind of part of the reason why you're running for president is you want to kind of get in like internally to potentially make some changes? Am I kind of vibing with you on the same thought process you're having there? First of all, I, I don't want to be president nor would I take the job for any amount of love or money or even esoteric drugs, I wouldn't do it. It's a terrible fucking job. Secondly, no one in their right mind, my friend, could possibly believe that I could be president, or, or anybody who's not in one of the two parties, for that matter. It can't be done. So I'm not looking to be the president. I'm looking for the national stage. You know, I ran in 2016 on the Libertarian Party's banner. I got on the national stage. John Stossel on Fox News and debating people everywhere. Well, I got to say what I wanted to say, and I wanted to do the same thing again. And that's all. Uh, I'm a little older now, and 
a little less caring about what people think about what I say. So perhaps my words might be a tad more honest this time. I really got one more final question for you here. Hit me with a price prediction, man. You know, you're famous for your price predictions. What do you think Bitcoin's going to be about uh, maybe around the halving next year? Okay, here's some mechanics of Bitcoin that people never pay attention to. Number one, we're only 3 million Bitcoins away from the final Bitcoin. And it's going to take a long time to get there. Only 21 million Bitcoins. Almost 7 million are lost in the void, never to be discovered. And every day, more Bitcoins are lost than we are mining. Do you understand what's happening? Bitcoin is growing in terms of acceptance and diminishing in terms of volume. I mean, a third grader could figure this shit out. So just figure out what that ratio of loss to gain is. And if it's not a million dollars by the end of 2020, then mathematics itself has somehow failed this discipline. And two plus two is no longer four. I think it's 22, perhaps. Guys, thanks for tuning into the episode today. That was a fun one. John is always a fun guy to have a conversation with because I never really know what he's going to say, but he says it with a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of belief, which is really, really cool and inspiring to see. I gotta say, every single time I seem to talk with John, he has some very, very strong opinions and very highly educated opinions. You can tell the man is very, very well read. So I wanna give a big thank you to John for coming on the show and to all of our listeners today, I want you to do one thing. In our DYOR segment, our do your own research segment, what I want you to do as homework today is to simply either think or take some notes upon what responsibility means to you. In your experience, with your unique perspective on life, what responsibility do you think you have to making the change in the world or in the government that many people want to see? Finally, guys, come join us in our Facebook group where we dive into a little bit of the conversations around these episodes and ask any question you want. If you have a specific question for John or for myself, you can ask it in the group and I can do my best to answer it if it's for me. And if it's for John, I can do my best to reach out to him specifically to see if I can't get it answered for you. Finally, guys, please give us a like, a review on iTunes, subscribe on iTunes, and if you can, leave us a comment. It means a lot to us and we would really, really appreciate it. All right, guys, it's your boy Nye. We'll catch you in the next episode.